Hi everyone, today we are going to learn how to create this spiral effect in Touch Designer. The song we will be using is Let It Happen by Tam Impala. We'll first take, at, uh, take a look at the final effect, then I will walk you through the network structure, and finally we will be building everything from scratch. Uh, Alright, let's jump in. Now let's understand the network structure. The network consists of two main parts, the audio part and the visual part. For the audio, I have audio file in connected to audio analysis, uh, which is a pre-built component in Touch Designer. And I only use the high and kick from the audio analysis for the visual we're creating today. And then head on to the visual part the three rendering, we are rendering a, a box with custom texture to it. And then the post processing part uh, is where we make the effects more interesting. For the post processing, I applied uh, feedback, distortions, transform, and different other effects to achieve the final effect. It may look a bit complicated, but the main idea here is we want to make an interesting or fancy base, as you call it, and then we feed the base into a feedback loop so we get a more interesting output in the end. Um, that's the basic idea of the network. Uh, now let's build the whole thing from scratch. I kept these three box to better organize our network. Um, you can also set up this way. Starting with the audio part, we need a audio file in and audio device out and the info and a um, audio analysis, which uh, from the palette audio analysis. Yes. Connect all of them and connect audio analysis to a now and we add a select uh, we're gonna use um, the kick and uh, and high yeah we only gonna use kick and high and then we end up with a null for uh, both of them because uh, in between we might do some uh, range uh, calculation. We want to map these, chop this reference to our visuals so that it will take into account all the modifications we did in between. Uh, we change the song to um, let it happen. Yes. Okay, now we have the song. Let's also make sure the project timeline matches the song length, which is the file length frame here. And then, um, yeah, let's head on to the 3D part. So what we need, we need a box, stop, connected to a noise, Connected to a geometry, and we have uh, the rendering sets the camera and the texture is uh, I use constant, and then the rendering, uh, the, the render, yes, and then I uh, chop the reference of the material uh, constant as a material but we want to add it um, our own texture, which is the color here. Uh, what I did here is uh, just a noise uh, with a movie file in another texture and displace, uh, displace the noise with the um, texture. So we got this uh, look. 
I left on the box, I changing the scale to 9 and the offset to 7. So we have this expanded box rather than the, um, the fixed box. Okay. Another thing I want to do is I want to move our box a little bit uh, vertically so that is more interesting and adds the movement we want. To do that, uh, I need a uh, LFO and connect it to a mask because we might need to change the RAN to fit our needs. And then the now. And now we check the, the box here. How do we shift our box vertically? You can do it by uh, changing the anchor V or you can also do it um, in the center here. So I just changing the anchor V and I notice the range is from zero to one. So I need my uh, LFO to have the same range. So now LFO is actually from minus one to one. So we want to map the range to from minus one to one to zero to one. And then we map these, uh, we can change the same name, anchor V, uh, change or change, shift vertically, shift vertical. Um, we change this to anchor V. And, and then now it's too fast, we change it to 0 0.15. Okay. Uh, this is our moving circle uh, moving box and then uh, we head on to the post processing now for the coolest part the post processing part this is where we take our basic rendering and turn into a dynamic spiral effect um, i think it will be helpful to review the network again to see what we are building uh, I will show you the before and after and to show you exactly what kind of parameters I use and how does it impact in our visuals. Uh, so the first is the feedback loop where I take the transform at the background and feed it into um, a level and transform and create this um, multi-layered, uh, more, more depth visual. And this is the first feedback loop. And then the second thing, I, I add a lens distort to our visuals. So, um, to see this one. And then the third thing I did was I add a um, flip and displace it by itself. So I have a more of the ripple effect. This is the after the distort. And after that, I add it uh, to a um, switch because I want to add more emphasis on the uh, on the beat. So I connected a constant. So when there is a beat heat, you will see the visuals uh, turn into Sia color. And the same idea of um, adding more emphasis to the beat, I want to make the visuals react more dramatically to the beat. So I also use the uh, kick or high to drive the distort and the feedback fading trails. So for example, in here, in the level, I add the kick to drive the opacity and for the lens distort, I add the, the high to drive the distort, so on and so forth. Uh, that's the basic idea. So let's get back to our network. Uh, first thing, I add a transform background color to orange and choose compose background color. And then we create our first feedback loop. Connect the feedback and level and transform and composite. Choose 
over. And compose over back to the feedback, uh, feedback to the feedback. And for the level, we want to drive uh, opacity with our kick. So for the kick here, I change the range from 0 to 1, uh, connect to a mass, change to 0 0.7 to 0 0.95. Uh, and then uh, for the level opacity. And then for the transform, uh, we change, increase the size slightly 1.03 so now when we see the visual um, we should see um, okay it's wrong order we should see the visual uh, reacted to our bits and then uh, we create the distort we change the color to black to be more visible actually uh, let's remove these two first um, add a uh, lens distort also we add a transform and as uh, so a composite compose them together The composite I choose overlay. Uh, we can see how it looks like. And we turn on the invert distortion and change the parameter um, slightly. This is what works well for my visual. You can uh, change and experiment for yours. Uh, and then um, Another thing is I want to use the high to drive my uh, distort. So I will head on to the high and chop the chop the reference and chop the reference here. So that it responds to our um, beats and I will just change the order. So that the larger version is always underneath uh, the composite. And then we add the ripple effect with the um, displays and flip. Displays. Okay. We flip the Y and displays itself. Uh, and we want to lower down the displace weight to very small, um, something like that. And then I also add a transform, uh, and uh, uh, and I use the the kick to drive to drive the the size of the box. And then I adding a, a blur to my transform. And then I, I want to compose all of them together. Um, the transform, the blur, and my um, flip and add a stop and to see how it looks like okay. and then after that uh, the final thing we add a constant to add a bit more emphasize to because we want to add more uh, dynamic to our highs and change the color to uh, sire And then add a switch, switch between them. Um, and I will use the high um, to control the, the index. Okay, and uh, we need to change the 
resolution to the same uh, I use parent parent size so this is the final base and we're gonna fit it into the feedback our final feedback and connect it to a level connect it to a transform composite um, And the composite we use a stop and then for the level I um, I use 0 0.92 and for the transform we add the rotation to create the spiral effect um, and I uh, use the high again to drive the rotation. So um, as you can see, that, it haven't changed. And that's the basic base we have and the spiral effect. Okay. I think it's a little bit uh, different than the previous video I've made, but you can always add the post processing part, for example, for uh, the level to make it more uh, vibrant. You can also do it in the video editing tool. And then let me think, or uh, to add more color, sometimes I use composite, I just composite again on top of each other and try out different um, operation here. So for example, multiply, and then you get a richer color. And that's it. Uh, that's the end of this tutorial and hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any feedback or um, comments below. Thank you.